executive branch to meet the moment and today's challenges, to do so with urgency and equity for all people across this state. We created the nation's first climate chief to make sure that our entire government is, pro is focused on protecting our communities and our future. We created an executive office of housing and livable communities to focus on housing affordability. We appointed advisory councils for black empowerment and Latino empowerment to prioritize and guide our work. Today, we build on this work in partnership with a disability community that includes every race and ethnicity, every age group, gender, LGBTQ plus status, income level, and region of our state. This is truly about strengthening Team Massachusetts. We believe government has an obligation to meet the highest possible standard of accessibility and to lead the way forward. The 33rd anniversary of the ADA is a good moment to elevate and amplify our commitment to this work. Just yesterday, the United States Department of Justice proposed new rules under the ADA to improve web and mobile access for people with disabilities and to clarify how state and local governments can meet ADA obligations online. There's a comment period before the new rules go into effect, and we will certainly look to be a leader in supplying commentary to the U.S. government. We're also grateful for the national leadership of Senator Ed Markey. Yesterday, Senator Markey reintroduced his legislation to update accessibility regulations to keep pace with development technologies, including video conferencing and AI. We know there is much work to do, but now we will have an infrastructure to help us do that work. We'll move forward, as always, in partnership with the community. I now want to invite Secretary Snyder up to say more about the executive order. And I'll have you know that a few months ago, Secretary Snyder um, offered on his own to say that he wanted to do something by way of an executive order um, that really resulted in the order that I'm going to sign shortly. And so I really commend Secretary Snyder and members of his team for the care, the attention, the focus on this. And we're really proud to have him uh, offer a few words today. He looks remarkable, also considering that he uh, rode his bike in, actually. Uh, <laughs> was it 30 miles? I don't know. It's 12 miles. It's 12 miles, yeah. but, um, on, uh, but it feels like uh, a lot more than that. So uh, we, now, uh, we now welcome Secretary Snyder. Good morning. Thank you, Governor Healy, for your leadership in creating this historic executive order. Also, thank you to the many individuals in this room for your partnership and advocacy in helping make today's signing of this executive order a reality. Technology underlies all of the services the Commonwealth provides and is the primary means of, for sharing information. In fact, a 2021 study by Pew Research indicated that 80% of people rely on digital methods for accessing government services. Therefore, it is essential that we make all websites and digital applications simple to use, accessible, equitable, and responsive. This administration is committed to serving all people of Massachusetts, and ensuring that everyone can meaningfully engage with state services using technology. The prior experience interacting with mass digital services resulted in different outcomes based on the application or website they are visiting. We can do better. Providing a consistent means of digital accessibility for all is an essential goal. When we build digital services for people with different needs, we build better for everyone. And these changes truly do impact everyone. You, your family, people you know. Personal story. Uh, one of my sons was taking his first vision test when he was five, and they're going through the colored circles for the colorblindness, and they're showing the colored circles, and he's calling all the numbers, you know, 5, 15, 21, for some time, very confidently. After some time, the doctor calls us over, and he says, you know, I, I think he's, he's colorblind. We're like, but he's been calling all the numbers. And the doctor's like, yeah, he's just, like, making them up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, now I, I recognize that colorblindness is, is a minor disability, but there are websites, particularly with maps and status bars, where he cannot see the different colors, and there's a communication breakdown from what is intended. This is just one small example. We need to meet the requirements for each disability. Most importantly, we have to ensure that all of our websites are readable with screen readers like JAWS. To meet these needs, I am thrilled to announce that this week we'll be posting the application for the Chief IT Accessibility Officer. Position online, and I encourage all interested candidates to apply. This position will lead the planning and coordination for, to make all of our websites accessible. I am also excited to work with the incoming Chief IT Accessibility Officer and other members of the Digital Accessibility and Equity Governance Board, including members of the public with expertise and real lived experience to champion its mission. In conclusion, this executive order will ensure that our websites and applications are accessible for everyone by creating a, a motivated governance body and associated leadership to maintain steady focus on the issue of digital accessibility. Through ongoing monitoring, support for testing, and the definition of real standards, the Digital Accessibility and Equity Program will keep the issue of equitable digital access at the forefront of website and application development. I'll next invite Julie O'Leary from the Mass Office of Disability to speak. I'm happy to be here today. Our executive director, Mary Mahan McCauley, wasn't able to attend. Um, I'm Julia O'Leary. I'm our general counsel at Mass Office on Disability, and I'm thrilled to be here today to celebrate the 33rd anniversary of the ADA, Disability Pride Month, and Governor Healy's signing of today's executive order. Massachusetts Office on Disability's mission is to create a more accessible and inclusive commonwealth where people with disabilities have an equitable opportunity to access and enjoy all aspects of life. We're proud of the work that this administration is doing to promote accessibility for people with disabilities in general and digital accessibility in particular. We often think of accessibility in terms of architectural access. Is there a ramp to get into the building? Is there an elevator? But accessibility to the digital world is in online. The same way that buildings must be designed to be accessible for all, our digital services must be designed so that they are accessible for everyone. As more state business moves online, it's critical that both Commonwealth employees and members of the public have access to the Commonwealth's digital services. In the spring of 2021, Mass Office on Disability began working with the Executive Office of Technology Services and Security and other executive department and to ensure our digital offerings are accessible to people with disabilities. MOD looks forward to partnering with the Chief Information Technology Accessibility Officer and the Digital Accessibility and Equity Governance Board to continue to improve the Commonwealth's digital accessibility program. We're excited by and grateful for this administration's commitment to making state services equally accessible to all. Thank you for being here with us to celebrate this historic moment. All right. You can go to sleep. You don't need to hear me read. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. I'm Kim Charlson, um, and I'm the executive director of the Perkins Braille and Talking Book Library, who are blind or have low vision or other disabilities. A side note, um, 33 years ago, the Americans with Disability Law was passed. I was 33 years old then, and it's been 33 years, so you all get to know how old I am, if you can add. <laughs> so I've lived half my life with the ADA and half my life without it. And it truly has made a difference. As my career has been all about access to information and reading materials in accessible formats, including audio, large print, braille, and digital formats, this is so important to me disabilities to stay informed and to access the information needed to participate in our society. 
As more and more of our daily lives are conducted online, equitable, inclusive, and accessible digital experiences must be provided for everyone platforms. The need for procurement processes and evaluation of new systems must be a critical component in the accessibility journey. For Massachusetts residents with disabilities, there have been websites and functions of state government that have not been accessible in their designs for people using their assistive technologies. With so many functions of the Commonwealth taking place online, accessibility of the online experience for everyone must be is essential, especially for people, and they need to be user friendly. <clears throat> this executive order establishing the Digital Accessibility and Equity Governance Board is a major step towards strengthening and advancing digital accessibility with government agencies within the Commonwealth. Still, Agen our agencies and every agency provides service to Massachusetts residents and that must be including the residents who have disabilities. This order outlines who will serve on this board and the right players will be at the table developing important accessibility policies and procedures for the future. I am also very pleased to note that expert members of the disability community are also going to be at that table, allowing this new board to embrace the fundamental principle of disability advocacy, nothing about us without us. Thank you to Governor Healy and her entire administration for their support and commitment to raising awareness and evaluating digital accessibility and inclusion for all Massachusetts residents with disabilities and for joining with the disability community as partners on this essential journey toward truly equitable online access and experiences for all residents of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you to all of our speakers. And at this time, we're going to uh, proceed with the Lieutenant Governor and I signing today's proclamation. Thank you. Why don't we why don't we do this? Let's take questions on topic uh, to start. Again, I just want to really thank Secretary Snyder and his team and all of the advocates and members of the community who worked together in preparing today's executive order. Yes. You can go. Yeah, great. I went to a place this morning that had a, a, a kiosk 
it was not accessible. And I just feel like everything should be accessible. So as you stated before, you're trying to do this now. And um, I appreciate you for doing that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I just note, uh, Rose Miller, you work in the Attorney General's office and you are uh, visually impaired and you are working and providing services to residents across the state who regularly will call or write to the Attorney General's office. And this is just another reason why it's absolutely imperative that across state government we have for the sake of our residents and also our employees technology that is always accessible. So thank you. Yes. I think we'll probably go through uh, highly high prioritized ones. So it might be the ones that are most accessed. So it might be some internal, some external, but based on on, on the, the need. Mm. Yep. Governor, what's yep. the timeline for hiring that the accessibility officer and what's the salary? Uh, I don't know about salary yet, but obviously we're going to look to, and others might, but uh, we're going to look to hire this person as quickly as possible. Again, this is something that's really important to the lieutenant governor and me. We've long been advocates of, of equity and inclusivity uh, and diversity, and this is just part of what uh, what we're doing as an administration. One of the first things I announced as governor is that we would conduct an equity assessment across all realms. And an equity lens, I can assure you, is applied across all secretariats, across all agencies. And, uh, you know, inspired by that, Secretary Snyder developed the idea that we should have an executive order to do what we need to do when it comes to making sure that our services, our technology are accessible to people across the state. This week, yes. My name is Karen Langley. Uh, I wanted to find out if this would apply to contracted providers. So the Commonwealth has many agencies. Mm -hmm. They contract with those to deliver the services. Will the contracted providers who have websites be required to have them? Yeah, I understand that, Karen. And you know, wearing another hat several years ago as a lawyer in the Attorney General's office, I had the privilege of working with members of uh, various communities, people who are deaf and hearing impaired and also people who are blind and, and visually impaired. And we actually brought a number of cases, some of you may remember, against Apple, against uh, movie theater chains to uh, ensure that they did what they needed to do to, to make their services accessible. So I come to this with a real commitment around this issue, and certainly we want to look to make sure that all who are accessing services, whether through the state directly or through our vendors, are able to do so. So more work will be required on that front, but I certainly take your point. And I appreciate the comments from uh, those in the community in attendance today. It's exactly the kind of uh, informative uh, contribution we want from members of the community. It's why we've set up the governance board the way we have. It's why we'll go about uh, prioritizing what, what makes the greatest impact um, so that we're as quickly as possible able to have the kind of technology and accessibility that people across this state deserve. Thank you. I think you see the ball rolling today. We're up, we're posting, we're looking to hire. And I know that Secretary Snyder and others have given a lot of thought to, to getting everything going as, as quickly as possible. Um, I don't know if we set an exact date yet, um, but it will, it will be soon. Yes, our goal is to get it by at least the first meeting in the first end of August, yeah. beginning of September. So oh. soon, dependent upon the hiring. That's, that's, that, that's soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's soon. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll let uh, we'll let folks step off. Thank you.